Hello, I'm Shomik and I'll be presenting our work Referenceless SSIM Regression for Detection and Quantification of Motion Artifacts in Brain MRIs. Motion is one of the most common sources of artifacts in MRI. It can be physiological or can even be physical movement, which can be voluntary or involuntary. Image quality of the acquired images must be assessed to assure that they are of acceptable quality and they will ensure diagnostic accuracy. Structural Similarity Index or SSIM is a commonly used metric to evaluate perceptual image quality, but this is computed by comparing the corrupted image against a non-corrupted reference, which is not possible during clinical acquisitions. This work aims to regress SSIM values directly from the corrupted images without any reference image and with the help of deep learning models. For this approach, 200 volumes were used for training, 50 each for validation and testing. The total collection of datasets included 68 randomly selected volumes from the publicly available ICSI dataset, 114 volumes acquired at a 3D scanner, referred here as site A, 93 volumes were acquired at 7T, referred as site B, and finally 25 volumes acquired using a mix of scanners with 1.5 and 3 Tesla field strengths, referred here as site C. All except size C data were resampled to a 1 mm isotropic resolution. The more detailed structure of the dataset can be seen on the right side. The images of this dataset were artificially corrupted using a modified version of the random motion transformation of Torch.io and a custom corruption method developed in-house, which randomly manipulates the phase encoding lines of the case space to introduce motion. Here are two examples of the two motion corruption approaches we have used. On the left are the original MRIs, while the artificially corrupted ones are on the right. The first row shows an example using Torch.io, and the second row shows our in-house method. Now let's have a look at the complete pipeline of this research. Given one 3D volume as input during every epoch of training and validation, one slice in one of the three possible orientations was randomly chosen. We also used contrast augmentation techniques such as random gamma, logarithmic sigmoid manipulations, and adaptive histogram adjustment. If the contrast augmentation was enabled during an experiment, then it is applied to the selected slice. Then motion corruption was applied to artificially corrupt the image. Afterwards, the SSIM value between the original image and the corrupted image was calculated, which was then treated as the ground truth label for training the regression models. This random pipeline was applied to every volume during every epoch of training and validation, then finally during testing. This experiment employed two different sizes of ResNet model, ResNet 18 and ResNet 101. It's time for the results. The scatter plot here shows the predicted and the ground truth SIM values. It can be seen that all four models managed to predict the SSIM values close to the ground truth ones, and they perform quite similarly. It is apparent, however, that the models without contrast augmentation performed worse compared to the models with contrast augmentation. To understand these results better, we now have the individual scatter plots for each model, along with the plots showing the residuals, which are the deviations of the predicted values from the ground truth. Here it is clear that the ResNet 18 with contrast augmentation performed the best, and ResNet 101 without contrast augmentation performed the worst. These plots reconfirm our finding from the previous slide that the models with contrast augmentation perform better than the models without. The predicted SSIM values do indicate the image quality, but it is difficult to compare them against any subjective assessment. Hence, we divided the range of SSIM values, which is between 0 and 1, into 3, 5, and 10 equal sub-ranges. Based on that, the ground truth and the predicted SSIM values were converted into classes and visualized here with the help of confusion matrices. It can be seen that the predicted class labels were close to the diagonal in all cases indicating a very accurate result. For the three, five, and 10 class problems, the resultant accuracies were 97, 95, and 89% respectively. Now to conclude, the presented method managed to predict the SSIM values of artificially motion corrupted images without the ground truth images with high accuracy. And the motion classes obtained from those predicted SSIMs were very close to the true ones. Considering the complexity of the problem in quantifying the image degradation level due to motion, given the variability in terms of contrast, resolution, etc., the results obtained are very promising and show that this method has the potential to be used as an automatic image quality assessment technique. Further evaluations, including subjective evaluation, will be performed on clinical data to judge its applicability in clinics and the robustness against changes in real-world scenarios. Thank we you now so much for your attention individuals and please feel free to contact me for any questions or feedback.